how Awana Share is, how we can help you for pregnant at Vitalem. So before I start talking about what we as doctors can do, I will tell you what you can do as a person. So the first thing is to identify where the problem is. You can identify when there's a weight problem and I'll tell you why we want the weight to be low. When the weight is high, that is the BMI is high, you tend to have issues with egg releasing, you tend to have insufficient follicles growing, you tend to have lower fertilization rate, and there's a higher risk of you using higher medication and increased risk of unsuccessful IVF. And need I say pregnancy related complications once you are pregnant, if you have high weight, that includes miscarriages, that includes um, diabetes in pregnancy and hypertension, as well as preterm birth, and as well as problems associated with delivery itself. But now, as doctors, what we will identify, we will identify issues that are related to the reproductive organs itself. So we will use an ultrasound to do that. We will use hysterosalpingogram, what we call an HSG, and we will do an office hysteroscopy. Yes, we can identify what the medical problems are that usually includes identifying what ovulation problems are. Then there are also what male associated issues that uh, some of my colleagues have mentioned already, as well as the diagnosis we call unexplained infertility. So if we use an ultrasound, the ultrasound always appears as gray, shades of gray and black. So with an ultrasound, you won't be able to see a nice picture, but it's usually a two-dimensional picture. So we're, when you're looking at the ultrasound, if you pay attention here, that's a uterus. So it's like a uterus that's been cut in half. And then um, you see those three lines that might be difficult to see, but we've got three lines and then we've got something that's pushing onto the three lines. That's how a fibroid may appear on the ultrasound. And if you're looking on the diagram across, it just shows how fibroids affect the lining. And you can have fibroids that are pushing onto the lining, or you have fibroids that are attached by a stalk onto the lining that is the type zero. So we will be able to identify all those things. And then when we do an, an HSG, by the way, we do an HSG in-house. So we won't send you else elsewhere, we will do it ourselves in-house. On the left, it's a normal appearing HSG. You can see the uterus and you can see the fallopian tubes on the side. On the right, however, it's an HSG that is abnormal. You can see there's a curvature at the top and even the filling within the HSG is not okay. You can see that uh, there is a filling defect. So when we do an office hysteroscopy, this is how a normal cavity should look like. That is on my left. And then on the right side, it shows a cavity that has got abnormality, which could actually be explained by the HSG that we've seen. Another way we can help you to fall pregnant once we've identified the problems is to do a surgery. So when would you require surgery for fertility achievement? It's when you've got fibroids, it's when you've got a um, cubal factor, that means you've got hydrosalpines, it's when you have endometriosis, especially if you have endometriomas and you are experiencing pain. In that case, we would rather, when you have endometriosis, we prefer that you start by making babies with, before we do surgery. However, if you have pain, then with pain, we might decide to do surgery first. Then um, if you have intrauterine lesions, polyps, adhesions, or if you have retained products, then we would rather do surgery first. All right. So let's say we've done the surgery, everything has been corrected. There's a video showing how we remove the fibroids that are 
intrauterine. With this video, let's just hope it plays. Yes. So that's a fibroid and a polyp, and we use something called True Clear that will chop away the fibroids and the polyps without actually damaging um, the cavity. So that's how the True Clear works. It's done hysteroscopically, and before you know it, you've got a nice, beautiful cavity whereby implantation can occur without any issues. Then once the woman is sorted out, we also want to make sure that um, the men's side things are sorted out. That means we look at doing a semen analysis. And uh, if there are problems with semen analysis, we can always help with what is called testicular biopsy, whereby if we didn't get any sperm when we we're doing uh, the semen analysis, then we will check and see what the problems are. If we discover that we can still retrieve sperm, we will directly go and retrieve sperm from the testes itself. But we will expand more on this. Then just to remind you, once the cavity is prepared and the sperm is everything, it's fine with the sperm, this is the root of natural fertilization. So what happens here when um, you're having intercourse at home and it's the right time, so the egg will be released into the fallopian tube and the sperm that will be traveling from the vagina into the uterus get also into the uterine tube. This is where fertilization happens. And then once fertilization has happened, then the baby will travel from the fallopian tube into the uterus. That usually takes about five days to implant into the uterus naturally. So what happens when you need to have ovulation induction done? So with ovulation induction, we usually start with the medication on day three of the period. We will start by doing a scan so that we can see that the anosis, everything is fine within the uterus and the pelvis. Then we will start with the medication, whether it's just the tablets only, or we will also add injections. And then we will scan you on day 10. Once we've got a dominant follicle of about 18 millimeters, you will be asked, to check for ovulation at home, or we can give you a trigger shot, and then the next step will be timed um, intercourse, which is what you will be doing at home, or it will be artificial insemination, depending on what will be your next step for you. Then what happens in people that have got Cuba factor, and it's been discovered that what is needed is IVF. So IVF, that means in vitro fertilization, this is a process whereby we take the sperm and the egg, we fertilize them outside. Once the baby, which is now called an embryo, is formed, then we will put the embryo back. So I'll just tell you, when would a woman need IVF? When we do ovulation in action, we often say that we will do at least three to six cycles, depending on the outcome with each cycle. Once ovulation induction has failed, then the next step will be to do IVF. The other time whereby you would need IVF is when there is tubal factor. It's when you have endometriosis. We will do IVF for male factor infertility as well. Or in some people, when we have what we call unexplained infertility. Now, just to take you briefly into doing IVF, we also start on day three of your menstrual cycle. We will start by doing a scan and uh, you will start with the injection. You will be shown how to inject yourself. So you will take the injection. Most of the time we say you inject yourself in the tummy. There are instances whereby you might use the file for injection. So the injection will take about 10 to 12 days before we go and do aspiration. Aspiration, before we do aspiration, we need your follicles to be around 18 millimeters, and then we will give you the trigger shot, and then we will go and do aspiration 36 hours after the trigger shot. Just to show you how we will do the aspiration, there is no cut. The aspiration will be done using a needle, so if we use the ultrasound probe, and we attach a needle onto the 
ultrasound probe and we aspirate the follicles. They will be aspirated into a test tube. And then uh, once the procedure is done, the embryologist will clean the, the eggs and then the process of fertilization will be started. With the process of ovulation of fertilization, it just depends on how we're going to fertilize the egg. There is the classic way or the conventional way whereby we just take the sperm and the egg together, we allow fertilization to happen. Or if there is a problem with the sperm, usually when we have less than 4% of the normal forms, then we will have to physically take the sperm and inject onto the egg. That process is called ICSI. Then once, so now after the IVF process, the embryo is ready to be transferred in. So doing an embryo transfer, it's more or less like doing a pap smear, you'll be awake, no cutting, no much is needed. We will use an ultrasound, we just need a full bladder. And then what we will do is we will introduce a catheter onto the cervix, into the uterine cavity, and then the embryo will be loaded onto another catheter, and then the catheter with the embryo will be threaded in onto the initial catheter under the ultrasound guidance, and then we will watch it and see where it's going into the uterine cavity, and um, we will deposit an embryo there, which is usually about one centimeter from the fundus, but it will all be done under the guidance of the ultrasound. And that is all that I needed to share with you. Thank you so much.